Welcome to 6.5 Media on the Road. I'm Krista Maycomber. I'm joined here with Will Townsend, and we are continuing our conversations here at RSA Conference 2024. We are very excited to be joined here by Harain Oberoi, who is the um, GM for Data and AI Security with Microsoft. Um, Harain, thank you so much for joining us. So um, we had the pleasure of kind of joining the introduction day yesterday, um, and there was a lot of great conversations around where Microsoft is taking the portfolio um, and certainly a lot of topics around um, generative AI and sort of the impact on security. Um, so, you know, Will, I know you kind of wanted to kick yeah. it off with some kind of considerations around large language models yeah. in particular, right? I mean, I mean there's, there've been quite a few announcements from mm -hmm. Microsoft on, on this subject. So, you know, from my perspective, it's important uh, to not only protect the data that, that is used for training and inference, but also the, the large language models themselves, because there's a lot of IP tied into that. And I know at the pre-event, um, you spoke to, I think, four announcements mm -hmm. and would love to have you go into a little more depth there and, and what Microsoft is focused on. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, even before I think getting to the announcements, maybe take a step back and think about why are we so focused on this? You know, and Basu said it yesterday, which was, you know, AI transformation requires uh, security transformation. Sure. And so I believe that as customers build Gen AI apps and use Gen AI apps, uh, the types of attack surfaces that we have traditionally known are going to evolve. Mm -hmm. And with that means new types of threats. And with that means we need new technology to address those types of threats. So that's a little bit of the, the backdrop of, you know, we have four announcements today, but we'll have four more you know, in a few months and we'll have many. It's more an iterative in. process. Mm -hmm. Right. It's going to be an iterative process. And so part of it is um, Microsoft being at the forefront of what's going on with AI transformation and helping our customers with it. We feel this responsibility for security for that transformation as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's kind of just the backdrop of why I think it's important. Um, and then sort of, I think, you know, happy to get into uh, the specific announcements and what we're doing. And, and what I will say is, you know, this is just a start. Sure. Um, there's going to be lots more to come uh, and and it's exciting for us as well. Yeah, great. Uh, is there any any one of the announcements in particular that you find, you know, very compelling or, or most compelling? Yeah, the, the way, I mean, I find all of them compelling. Yeah, sure. um, the, the way I like to think about this um, is how we spoke to it yesterday as well is yeah. you're either using generative AI, so you're using Gen AI, Gen AI that someone else built like a right. chat GPT or a uh, co-pilot, mm -hmm. um, or you're building your own custom generative AI. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're building your own custom generative AI, um, what many people don't realize is it's not that an organization is going to build one or two apps around it. We think they're going to build hundreds of mm -hmm. task specific Gen AI around these things. And so you're going to have all these custom built Gen AI apps and those have their own uh, security and governance requirements sure. as yeah. well. Yeah. So, so when we think about using generative AI, uh, there's sort of three areas where customers have uh, talked to us about needs and, and concerns. You know, the first one is just visibility. Uh, give me visibility into what's happening in my organization. Mm -hmm. Who is using which apps? Um, are those apps sanctioned by me? What's the risk level of those apps? I mean, there's thousands of uh, generative AI apps that you can go on online now and start using. Yeah. And that means I'm putting information into the prompts, you know, and I'm getting responses. So the, the second obvious uh, concern that comes up is, okay, data leakage, you know, someone put some information into the prompt, was that information sensitive? Mm -hmm. How do I get a handle on what information is going into these different applications? Uh, and then the third um, sort of concern that, that comes up repeatedly is, what's going on with AI regulations? Right. These yeah. regulations are rapidly evolving. And there's like a new kind of group or meeting that, that sprouts up, it seems like weekly now, right? Like in Europe and other parts of the world. Right. Yeah. I mean, every country is grappling with this. We're sort of grappling it at a global scale. How do we collaborate as countries around AI regulation? But then yeah. each individual country has to also implement its regulations and legislations and all of that. Sure. And so different countries are in different stages of maturity. You know, I say the, the EU historically has always been you know, in the front end of this. And so very, EU, very highly focused on regulation. Yeah, yeah. And so GDPR, the EU, yeah. GDPR and all of that. So the EU AI Act is one that's, I would say, furthest ahead. And so regulations as a whole is one that every customer I talk to. And and then the great thing about it is it's not specifically coming at it from a perspective of how do I avo avoid the regulatory penalties if I'm non-compliant. It's coming from a perspective of, no, this is actually helping me reduce my risk of security and compliance and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so it's 
it's really beneficial for us to collectively, and I know Basu was here and talking about this as a team sport. It's yeah. a team sport that includes uh, regulatory authorities and governments and different countries collaborating as well. Yeah. It certainly does. And to that point, um, you know, these regulations are not emerging for the sake of having regulations, right? It's because I think collectively we are trying to navigate this new landscape and kind of identify where are some of these threats and vulnerabilities and how do we best position ourselves to really take advantage of AI in a way that is safe and responsible and things like that. So um, maybe we could talk a little bit more specifically. Um, so I know in our conversations yesterday, we were we were talking about there are sort of these general purpose AI applications, and then there are these custom applications, um, and really kind of they each present some, you know, unique potential risks or threats. Um, so Haran, maybe you could kind of talk a little bit about that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, as I was saying for the, on the usage side of it, you know, you've got the risk specific ones around who is using it, the, yeah. what data can be leaked and all of that. Yeah. And so one of the announcements we made was around, uh, the AI hub in Microsoft mm-hmm. Purview and the AI hub is effectively this dashboard that gives you visibility into what apps are being used, who is using it mm-hmm. and what data is being, what, what sensitive data is being shared and not mm-hmm. being shared. It also starts to give you insights such as, okay, um, something like Copilot is referencing information in your organization that isn't classified or labeled. Mm-hmm. Okay, you might want to look into that to say, is, do you know if that's sensitive? If it's not labeled and classified, should it be labeled and classified? Mm-hmm. So giving customers just getting the arms around the problem yeah. uh, is sort of step one. Um, and then the other uh, sort of area that we focused on was as we were talking about is regulations. And so we have what we call these compliance assessments in Microsoft Purview. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just released new assessments specifically for the EUAI Act mm-hmm. uh, for the NIST AI risk management framework. And then there's mm-hmm. two ISO global standards. They have long numbers that I don't remember, but we've released the assessments for those as well. And that's really important. I know at Futurum Group, we've kind of um, spent a lot of time setting some of these regulations as well. And we do find that customers it's kind of difficult to know where to begin, right? So I think being able to have this assessment um, is very helpful for kind of helping them helping them to navigate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's a simple framework and it's a set of guardrails and step-by-step instructions yeah. so you can at least start to, you know, evaluate where you're at on the journey and, and uh, customers just appreciate that, that mm-hmm. prescriptive guidance that they get. Yeah, so, and I think the NIST framework provides, you know, a nice guide or a blueprint, but one size does not fit all. I mean, Based on the industry that you're in, like I heard yesterday at the pre-event, you know, Charlie Bell speak to financial services companies that are safeguarding people's bank accounts and credit cards and that sort of thing, um, uh, critical infrastructure with utilities and that sort of thing. And I think those those were some examples that were stated. But I, I'd like to get back to the, the data leakage point because you, you touched on that. This is a huge issue. And we're seeing almost on a weekly basis companies that are experiencing PII leaks, you know, mm-hmm. you know, exposing social security numbers and that sort of thing. And um, I believe generative AI is only going to sort of accelerate the sophistication for bad actors to do that. So I'd, I'd love to hear from, from your perspective and Microsoft's perspective, what recommendations would you make to address this whole notion of data leakage? Because it's not going away. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah I, I, and this comes up in a lot of my customer conversations as well. I like to say that um, strong data governance um, and security is sort of prerequisite hygiene for deploying uh, generative AI in your organizations. Because one of the unique things that makes generative AI so effective is that it it has visibility, at least in the case of, let's say, Copilot from 365 mm-hmm. into your graph, your Microsoft 365 graph. Mm-hmm. So it knows um, what information you have. Now, of course, if your information uh, has all the right access rights and privileges to it, if it has the right classification and labeling, uh, then you can start to apply rules and policies Mm -hmm. that say, hey, only uh, expose certain types of information to certain types of people. But if you haven't done that hygiene, it's much harder to do that. And so a lot of organizations that have uh, been earlier on in their journey on this are realizing, okay, we better accelerate uh, getting our our preparedness to adopt Gen AI by starting with information governance uh, and data security practices. And so it's it's important and and now there's a lot more interest uh, in doing that as well as a result of that. And maybe um, also kind of keeping that updated as, you know, kind of the data um, environment evolves within the organization as the regulatory requirements evolve and threats evolve as well. Um, So can you maybe talk a little bit about that too in terms of 
um, you know, how the Microsoft portfolio might help customers with that. Sure. Yeah. So historically, you know, and, and the, the good thing is we've sort of had a head start in this problem because historically we've used Microsoft Purview mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, protect and govern data that's in uh, Microsoft 365. And mm-hmm. so that's everything in, you know, SharePoint. Well, that was before the whole Gen AI, Gen no, AI wave. Or right. Golden. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And include and including, you know, other <laughs> chat interfaces like Teams. Mm-hmm. So today, for example, if you're in Teams, you know, we can actually detect um, a policy violation, you know, if there's mm-hmm. there's harassment or collusion or something like that happening. We can, this has got nothing to do with Gen AI. We just do that in Teams today and organizations use this. Mm-hmm. What well, turns out that the Gen AI uh, interface is very similar to a chat interface. Sure. And so if I'm now asking, uh, you know, my co-pilot or some other Gen AI app uh, questions that might indicate that I might be violating certain policies, well, that same technology that we've used can be quickly applied to this. And so we were able to take a lot of the IP we had in, in purview and pivot that very quickly towards uh, Gen AI apps as well. Yeah. Solid foundation. For it, sure. it really is. And we were able to see the technology in some of the demos and it's very, it's pretty slick. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe kind of one final question to kind of round things up. So I know, Haran, you referenced um, Copilot for um, security for Microsoft 365. And, um, you know, there's obviously so much that goes into play here when we talk about, you know, security and governments, especially for, you know, AI. So can you maybe talk a little bit about what are some best practices for customers that are looking to, um, you know, adopt Copilot? Yeah. I, and so I think similar to... Um, the broader use case of adopting Gen AI, yeah. you know, Copilot Fem 365 is is a very particular and we think very broad use case for it. Yeah. And so, uh, like I said before, you know, having strong information governance and data security hygiene, you know, is an important part of preparedness for it. Mm-hmm. Um, as part of that, you know, we've uh, uh, built out um, a practice, what we call fast track a preparedness for Copilot for 365 specifically to help customers start with assessing their environments, mm-hmm. understanding where their data lives, how much of it's classified, not classified, and then quickly get going in the co-pilot deployment mm-hmm. with the right hygiene in place. And so that's a program that we've been rolling out uh, and many customers that have been adopting Copilot from Microsoft 360. Is that a self-service tool that you go online or do you engage with a Microsoft uh, partner yeah, I do that assessment. It's it's a couple of things. We have a, a team within Microsoft that's the fast track team, and that's sort of the white glove service. Okay, we're doing a ton of work to enable our partners to deliver preparedness programs, and many of them are starting are doing that already. And that adds to their value add with absolutely uh, with what they're doing with Microsoft. Yeah, in fact, uh, I was in Australia a couple of months ago and met with a number of partners over there, and that this was still you know early before we had um, uh, fully GA'd Copilot for three sixty five mm-hmm. and. You know, it was a big topic of conversation, which is them building a preparedness practice for the adoption of Copilot M365 is a huge opportunity for them and sure. um, and for customers to get value from it. Yeah. So thank you, Hiran. That makes a lot of sense. And why don't we maybe shift gears for a moment and talk about the custom um, AI applications that customers are creating and using? Because I know that Microsoft had a couple announcements around that this week as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, I love this topic because I really think what's happening around application development is is really exciting. Um, having gone through the wave of moving from on-premise to the cloud, we saw this shift in how applications were developed. You know, we went from what was this historic three-tier architectures to these microservice-based architectures. Yeah. And, and what that did was it caused this complete um, reinvention of different aspects of application development, in, in, including, um, you know, DevOps and, and all of it. And, you know, I believe that with AI, with generative AI, you know, a very similar thing is happening because the the components of a generative AI app are fundamentally different uh, than irregular apps. You know, you've got the, obviously you've got the um, large language model, but you also have this thing called the AI orchestration layer. Mm-hmm. And then you have this huge dependency on data, you know, having spent a lot of time in the, in the data world myself, you know, I like to say data is the fuel that powers AI. And so you've got training data to train the model. Mm-hmm. You've got fine tuning data to actually um, customize your application itself. Uh, and then you have what you call grounding data or web data to use in, in these uh, rag processes to sort of minimize hallucinations or provide more, more accurate responses. So all of that data needs to be secured and all of that data you know, needs to be protected against um, attacks such as poisoning and things like that. And so uh, just having a inventory and a view of all your different AI assets, you know, is is a great starting point. And so to address that that specific issue, 
you know, we announced um, uh, posture management for AI assets in Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And so with that, you can now uh, both discover and inventory um, all your AI assets in your yeah. organization. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. When we look across the security landscape, this concept of posture management is has become a growing trend and it makes a lot of sense because we do have to do everything we can to try to at least keep up with the attackers, if not hopefully be a step ahead of them. And I think that posture management, really understanding where your vulnerabilities are, especially as these new AI applications are being custom built, um, you know, I imagine it's going to be resonating quite a bit with customers. From that yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, and that's that's the first piece of it. Right. And then the second piece of it is not just what you do, um, you know, sort of to, to protect your assets. Mm -hmm. But the second piece is in runtime, you know, how do you protect against these new types of threats? Mm -hmm. and, right. and, you know, yeah. example, one of them we spoke about yesterday was uh, prompt injection attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this idea that someone can use uh, um, English language and manipulate your model to do things it wasn't intended to do. Your demo was really effective in driving that home. Right. right. And how it like shut shut it down and then reported it and, and you know, the benefit of what you're doing from a, a complete Microsoft stack and being able to flow all of that information through a single pane of glass, I, I was blown away. It's really powerful. And it's important. It's important for us, you know, to be able to connect those dots because we are in a position to be able to do it, you know, so to be able to detect the attack that comes, enrich that information with the threat signals that we have, you know, from everywhere else, and then help uh, someone, a SOC analyst, correlate that with other alerts that they're getting inside, you know, Defender for XDR or whatever tool they're using. And so that way you can see the full attack path, you can see the intent, uh, and it makes it much easier for, to get ahead of these problems. Well, Haran, we wanted to thank you so much again for sitting down with 6.5 Media on the road. Um, I'm sure we could talk for, you know, many hours yeah. on all these topics and... Um, we, we certainly wish you a great week here at RSA Conference 2024, and um, we want to thank everyone for watching and look forward to seeing you on our next video.